It's a beautiful day where I'm at today, and I wanted to share with you that it's making me think that it's time to clean out the garage. I've done a lot of garages with clients over the years, and of course my own garage too, and so I wanted to share some of the best tips, best practices I have. The very first thing we do when we're doing any kind of organizing is we define the space. What is the purpose of that garage? Is it going to hold cars? Is it going to hold all the cars? Some of the cars? None of the cars? Um, is it going to hold lawn products, lawn equipment? Now if you have another space doing that, maybe you have a shed and it has some lawn equipment, don't divide things up. We want to keep like things with like things. So that means you may have a shed organizing project, but that's for later. Um, do you have sports equipment? Are you going to need space for that? So define what's going to be happening in that garage. Okay, so you've done that. Now, the next thing to do is pick out a nice day. The reason for that is I'm going to have you pull everything out of that garage. There's a reason for that. Um, but what is a nice day? Well, you know what? Most people do not like to do this when it's too hot or too humid. Um, if it's too wet, that's not a good thing. And I'm talking about water coming down or the ground is, is wet because you're going to be laying things on the ground. Uh, awfully windy is also not a great idea. Typically, uh, it's t being cold is not a problem because you're moving around and you're staying warm. So it does not have to be perfect, please. We're never, ever looking for perfection, but we just want it not too hot, not too windy, not too wet. Okay? Start pulling things out. Why do you do it that way? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but mainly because there is way more in that garage than you think there is. I promise you. It's just like a kitchen. Lots of little things get stuck in there, and it's just whatever you think you've got, triple it, quadruple it, or more. It's a lot. As you're pulling things out, be picky. You've defined what's going to happen in there. If you've got things in there, um, maybe you've got kids that have, they're in college now, and you said the, the garage is going to be for painting, the car, and lawn stuff, and you pull out a hula hoop, that doesn't fit any of those things. Get rid of the hula hoop. Let things go. So you're purging as you're pulling things out. Uh, the things that you decide, yep, I'm going to keep, uh, and, and you have a pile for things you're going to give away or discard over uh, out of the way. But as you're pulling the things out that you're going to keep, make piles of all the similar items. The sports equipment goes in one pile, the lawn stuff in another pile. Maybe you use your garage for overflow for the kitchen, so you've got paper towels and water bottles or something like that. They all go in one area. Once the garage is, is clear, do a very quick cleaning. You're not getting crazy here. You're just using a broom to kind of sweep out cobwebs and, and debris. That's it. You're done. Maybe a quick wipe of the shelves. That's all. Look at your piles again. Purge again. If you're unusual, you may have purged enough the first time. If you're normal, you did not purge enough the first time. So look at those and go, oh wow, I wanted to keep some paint, but I didn't know I had 36 cans of paint. Let it go. As you're letting go of things from a garage, you have to be very conscious of hazard, hazardous material. Make sure you're disposing of things properly. And I do talk about that in some of my blogs. If you have questions, drop it in the comments. I'm glad to answer. But we want to be respectful of the environment and be wise. Okay, so now you've purged all the piles twice. Decide on what are your zones within the garage. Where do bikes go? Where does sports equipment go? Where does the food stuff go? I'm going to make a, a, a suggestion that you are you try to be smart about it. So let's say you have a door from the garage into the house. Put the food products, the paper towels, those kind of things you're grabbing, pantry type items, near the door. Put the lawn stuff near the garage door. You know what you're going to be grabbing mostly from the house, and it's not going to be weed killer. It's going to be paper towels. So be smart where you're putting things. Also, be honest. <laughs> if you have this much room, you do not get to put this much stuff in this much room. So you've purged twice already. If you're trying to put stuff back, in and it just doesn't fit its zone, that means you've got to get rid of more stuff or you've got to take uh, space from another zone and make sure that stuff fits. Okay, uh, one of the things I like to suggest is I think it works really well, especially if you have bicycles and kids with other kinds of riding toys, to mark off uh, space on the floor and use painter's tape. It's great. It's about three inches wide, I think. Uh, typically it's blue. And just mark it off because that's where the bikes go. Kids think of it as their parking spot. They're more likely to use it. 
and it keeps stuff from being coming a tripping hazard. Uh, go ahead and put hooks on the walls or get a handyman to put hooks on the walls if that's not your cup of tea because you can hang things like uh, rakes and things with handles. Uh, get them off of the floor, get them out of the way, get them up on the wall. You can hang bikes at the end of the season. Um, just a lot of ways to use that horizontal, excuse me, the vertical space and not the horizontal space only. It is well worth taking some time to clean your garage. These are just some quick tips. I'd love to hear what you've done that has worked for you. I'd love to hear what you've done that hasn't worked for you. And if you have questions, drop them in the comments.